The outcomes for patients with a multiple myeloma have improved dramatically over the past several years, and that is uh, truly a reflection of the better tools we have for the treatment of the disease. When I finished fellowship, no one wanted to do myeloma because we had very few tools, and at that time, uh, the median survival was measured a, approximately two to three years. It's not unusual now for us to see patients who are out uh, eight to 10 years. In fact, we just published a study earlier this year in leukemia uh, where we looked at close to 10,000 myeloma patients, and it's a sort of a neat new system to do research. We actually cross-reference a database for a commercial insurance company, something called Truven Analytics, with the Social Security Death Administration, so we could actually create kaplan meier survival curves, and we show that even over the last several years, you continue to see an improvement in the survival for myeloma patients. There's a strong rationale for using combination regimens in, in multiple myeloma. Um, historically, um, we've treated most of the hemopoietic cancers with, with combinations. And so the aim in this is to select um, different mechanisms of action of the drugs and different side effect profiles. And so if you combine up the drugs, you can get additive value and synergistic value and in lymphomas it was shown that combinations really work well and so I've been interested in this question in, in myeloma and we can show that at presentation it's not just one clone that the, within the clone there's heterogeneity of some sensitive cells some resistant and so it's very logical to kill as much of the cancer cells as possible that you use a combination and aim for a deep, deep response. Over the last five years, we have changed in how we think about the goals of therapy for a newly diagnosed multiple myeloma patient. Anyone reading a textbook from 10 years ago would see in that first line that myeloma is an incurable disorder. However, we know that with optimal therapy, one can provide very durable uh, uh, control of the disease with the induction therapies we do and also with stem cell transplant. So I would say for the patient that we see nowadays, particularly that patient that will be a stem cell transplant candidate, we're thinking about going for the cure. Now, that's only a small minority of patients right now, probably somewhere between 10 and 20% of patients, but we're looking for very deep and durable remissions. So we're looking at the best induction regimens, best combinations, followed by transplant, and then usually that followed by a maintenance approach.